kids have to introduce yourself to each other and then you have to mention what is it that you're going to talk about um, you have to mention that we have received your application or we have received your information and we appreciate the information you've given us um, this project is important to us because of this and that uh, but um, there are some issues that we are hoping that we would work together to resolve. Um, so here's, um, here's the list of issues or conversations we would want to have with you at this time. Um, and, and then you may go ahead and have some of those um, issues bring up. And then it's Carl's or Nin's uh, um, turn to uh, also say that um, they appreciate you, the, the staff's work on this application, their review, um, and they this project is also very important to them. They've, uh, they've read the report, they understand staff's concerns, um, and here are the responses to these issues. And then you can go one by one talking about those issues and decide what you're gonna do. So since this project, since we are, first of all, since we are 13 groups in total, um, staff in group three will have to negotiate with two groups. Um, but since this was also the smallest application uh, in, uh, between all of these other um, application that I gave to other designations, I thought it would be fair to have it in this this application that one one group will ha have to talk to the two other groups. Um, so I want uh, you guys to give turn to both groups to have that conversation with the staff. Nav, if you can start, and then Carl and Nen can respond to each of those issues. And if Carl and Nen, if you guys have um, distributed the tasks throughout the group, you could at any time say uh, this person or that person will respond to this issue or will talk about this issue and how we address it, why we can't address it. Remember, this is your chance to um, convince each other of your position. So you have to take your chance. Go ahead, Nav. Okay, sorry, we don't have that much time, so I'm going to go to the other rooms. I want you guys to start the conversation as soon as possible. Yes, Raymond, thank you. Um, and I'll go to other rooms and I'll come back to this group. But you start the conversation, go ahead and discuss the issues. Hello, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so we're group one, staff. And uh, we have some concerns that need to be addressed for the 68 Daisy uh, development. Uh, namely, I think the proposed building heights, lot frontages, and orientation and floor space indexes uh, remain to be unsolved. So I think we need to address those. Um, I know that the stormwater uh, system is OK and the traffic transportation impact is okay. Which part, Carl? Did you guys hear any of that or do I have to restart everything? Beginning? Okay, so, oh, okay. So I think the main problem we have is the proposed building heights, lot frontages and orientation and uh, floor space indexes. I think those are the things yet to uh, remain unsolved. 
I know that the municipal stormwater management is okay because that was my part and the transportation impact is also okay because the applicant group has provided uh, engineering studies that say it's okay. So we don't have to talk about that, but I think the proposed building heights and frontages and uh, floor space index needs to be resolved. So if uh, applicants want to say something, that'd be uh, great, I guess. Thank you. Uh, I guess we'll go first. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. If you guys don't, just let me know in the chat. Um, I guess according to the way the teacher has said it, uh, thank you staff for uh, taking the time to look through our application. Um, in regards to the building height, uh, we, in the rationale, it states that um, our proposed height for the townhouses that we are planning to build are four stories. And uh, it also states in the rationale that 500 meters northeast of the site, which is, I would personally deem as not very far, um, also has the same amount, uh, same height. And I feel like if their proposal had been approved, what part of theirs would differ from ours? um in that kind of respect um as for the lot frontages uh can you elaborate a little bit more about what the issue with the lot frontages are is it stormwater sanitary issues or environmental issues like i i, I didn't see any issues with the lot frontages Does anybody on the staffing team know that uh, to answer Carl's question? Carl, do you know the exact measurement of your lot frontage? I didn't make a quick note of that, but I can look it up. Just give me one moment, please. Thank you, Carl. And to address your um, rationale of townhomes being built with four stories high 500 meters away uh that's okay because that's on toronto um right uh, toronto bylaw regulated land whereas the school site it's on etobicoke zoning code because during the amalgamation the school didn't fall under toronto zoning laws it stayed etobicoke and for etobicoke zoning code for residential zone um designation it doesn't allow for townhomes as well so that's another problem i think um uh this re representative for group two applicant speaking of the height of four story high um even though it's in the tubico zoning law uh based on the rationale uh, document um all of the residential homes around the area is around its mixed neighborhood so it's going to be from single story to four story high so i don't think there will be a problem with this what do you think staff so if i can direct your attention to page five of the 68 daisy avenue uh, zoning bylaw amendment application under zoning, it says quite clearly that um, for zoning in Etobicoke, under residential multiple, this zoning permits a range of uses, including semi-detached dwellings, single detached dwellings, duplex, triplex, and fourplex dwellings. Townhouses are not permitted under the former Etobicoke zo zoning code. 
So even though if neighboring places are <clears throat> are tall enough, I guess, for four stories, I don't think it fits within the zoning rules in our particular site. As for suggestions, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, did you say page five of the rationale or the staff report? Sorry, page five of the staff report. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Raymond, do you have any suggestion how to fix it or what do you want to fix or how do you want it? For the building height? Yes. Do you know what the required building height is? The required building height is 11 meters high or four story high. Um, our, our application is around 12.42 meters or 12.02 meters high. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. based on the rationale document, they have stated that the separation distance between... Um, Sorry, which page of the, the rationale document? document? Uh, give me one second to find it. Thank you. You can um, go check uh, the rationale document, page 31. Uh, it stated in there the separation distance is 11 meters. So there won't, it would be a minor, um, a minor thing. It's just a couple meters off for shadow casting. So is there other concern of the height, like the light and all of that? Sorry, one second, please.
So, Nen, your, yes, your proposed buildings are 12 and 12.5, whereas the allowed height is only 11 meters uh, to the peak of the roof. How are we going to address that? I guess one of the suggestions I have is to maybe dig a little deeper and don't put so many things at grade because from the drawings, it seems like uh, it's a everything's at grade, including the garage in the back. So maybe if you lower it by a little bit, meet us somewhere halfway or all the way. What do you think? One moment. Group one, do you guys have anything to say? Uh, not really, but we can take the suggestions uh, into consideration. Thank you, Carl. Can we not amend the zoning bylaw? for Etobicoke to have such a minor difference in height? Are we that allowed to do that? Well, in the rationale, it does state that um, one of the Which page, sorry, Carl? I would have to look it up. Uh, oh, OK. Um, one hi. of the main purposes was to, to, to fix the bylaw or to adjust the bylaw to do to accept the change. Go ahead, Ned. Oh, sorry. Okay, so as outlined in policy 4.19, the height and massing scale of the new development will be appropriate for the site. It is compatible with the adjacent and nearby residence properties and are consistent with the multiple unit buildings in proximity, proximity to the site varying heights. So it's saying um, we follow the policy of 4.19. So amendment to the zoning bylaw would not be a problem. So the story height will not be a problem. So there will be um, no changing. Sorry, Nan. Um, which page is that on the planning rationale? 4.19, did you say? No, um, it's on the policy 4.1, 1, 4.1.9. 1. Uh, let me just double check what page it is. It should be there in the planning ration. If the group one could help me find the page, please and thank you. Uh, so I have found it. It's uh, on page 28 of the planning rational. Uh, that That's currently pulled up on the screen. Do you want to highlight it? I don't know how to highlight it. There should be a box. Which bullet point is it? Wait, how do you like zoom it? Uh, on the top left corner, you should see the, the triple lines that says open session menu. Underneath that, you should see a magnifying glass around a square with lines on it. If you select that, it should say show view controls. And you should be, you should be able to zoom it in. S seems like someone else is already highlighting it. Yeah, so basically that. Uh, it addressed the issue of the height.
So the group two applicant um, believe that the height is no problem. It's only a minor. Hey, Nan and Carl, I think the main problem, I'm not really sure, but I think the main problem is because what you're citing is on Toronto bylaw jurisdiction, whereas the school site is on Etobicoke zoning code jurisdiction. So I think it's still 11 meters high. Um, you're right about how there's other developments nearby that are taller than even 12 meters, somewhere 12 point I mean, sorry, 13 and a half, I think. But I think it's the Etobicoke zoning law that's causing the problem. Um, I don't know if we can make amendments to it. Maybe we can ask the professor when she comes back. But I think that's why the staffing report says what it says. Sorry, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, we wait for the teacher to come back. if any negotiation between us. Uh, any concern of the proposal? Uh, did Carl figure out how much frontage there is uh, for your townhomes? I think was... my group to help me try to look for it as well. I think it's eight, eight point something I saw somewhere. You wanted um, the lot frontage um, actual measurements? Yeah, because I think that's another uh, part where the staff report has a problem with. And uh, index, floor index, I forget. It, my computer's frozen. <laughs> so I can't click between PDFs. OK, uh, yeah, maximum floor space index uh, seems like another problem. Uh, if you're talking about front, um, uh, our FSI, our FSI is approximately 1.3, oh. which again, like our neighbors, literally the neighbor at 79 Daisy Avenue is at 1.5. So I think we meet that, no? But I think, well, it says on the uh, staff report, the maximum floor space index permitted for detached and semi-detached dwellings is 0 0.6 times the area of the lot. And you're already at 1.3. Um, remember, I think because of the zoning code, it doesn't allow for townhomes. So maybe the yeah, but the enough. FSI is talking about vertical height as well, right? If we adjust the vertical height, depending on what you stated earlier, then that should theoretically lower the FSI as well. Isn't but FSI? I think FSI isn't FSI living space divided by lot area? Yeah, but then for townhomes, they're higher than your single detached, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas your single detached takes a lot more floor space, ground space, I guess. Be easier to say. And the 79 Daisy Avenue is actually um, they got approved by the city of Topico 
uh, bylaw number 1997 to 76. Yeah, I know um, it's being built. I can see it on Google Maps. I'm quite sure yeah. they passed everything. <laughs> if, I mean, like if they got passed for their um, units, right? Because yeah. ours are, our, um, But I wonder what, is, is, yeah, but I wonder what lower. they, what they did to make it pass, like what the applicants gave in and what the uh, staff were willing to compromise with as well. Yeah, definitely. That would be interesting to see. Yeah. Hold on. My group's saying something. Um, Ray is Janine. I'm just wondering, okay. uh, are you fully aware that the site is on the former Etobicoke uh, zoning bylaw? So that old one, are yes, you aware of that? Yes, okay. I've said that like four times. Okay. I think that's why we're having so much problems, right? Because City of Toronto bylaw allows for all these things, but because it's on a former school uh, property, and it's on the, like you said, the Etobicoke zoning law, uh, bylaw. I don't think, I think it has a more strict uh, requirements. Um, so while we're looking for information for the height and the lot frontages, is there any other concern you'd like to um, would like to address, Ray? Not that I know of, unless my group has uh, anything they want to elaborate on because this isn't even my part. This is uh, somebody else's part. So I'm not the specialist in this. Sorry, Nan, I can't answer that. No worries, You're, um, it was supposed to be Nan, right? No, no, it, it wasn't anybody really, but, oh, you mean the part? This part? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't really know.
I guess another thing that I could talk about maybe is um, does the new building architecture design conform with what's around it? Because if you've taken a look at Google Maps, it's mostly, I think, uh, detached homes that aren't nearly as tall, with a lot of them being bungalows, from my memory. And I, and I think that's also highlighted in the staff room report too. Maybe. Hi, Ray. There's also, um, speaking of the height, um, you can go to page yeah, no. two. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just saying hi. Hi. Um, so, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I'm so serious. Um, so on page 29, um, uh, on the planning ra rationale, uh, you there's there's information about the zoning bylaws height, and it says that our proposed plan is comparable, so it's compatible. Um, you can take a look at it. I think it's in the top or in the mid the middle part. Yeah, but I think the um, zoning, uh, sorry, the planning rationale, that's from your side, right? That's how you're trying to make sense of things. I don't think that's like um, your supporting evidence, right? Yes, basically that is why what we're doing here. We're negotiating, you have a problem, we give you facts that it's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not sure how to go about this, but um, I guess, yeah, why not? It doesn't hurt me. But, Are we talking about an amendment to the Etobicoke zoning law? I'm I'm not sure. Um, so speaking about the height issues, I believe we can postpone that until the teachers come back. Um, our proposed um, solution would be amendment of the zoning bylaw. And is that okay with the staff? Yeah, so, so Raymond, I just want to, um, I kind of understand what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, I can break it down a little bit further, a little bit more detail, I guess. Um, under your staff report, it says to conform with the official plan, um, particularly with uh, 4.1.5 and 4.1.9 with respect to the building types, height, lot frontages, and areas, et cetera. Sorry, um, where is that? What? Sorry. Which PDF uh, are you looking at? Under the staff report, mm -hmm. page six. Okay. Uh, issues to be resolved. Okay. First bullet point. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and then it says the conformity with the official plan, particularly 4.1.5 and 4.1.9. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have addressed that um, in the planning rationale under page Uh, page 28, mm -hmm. uh, 5.2 land use. 5.2. Uh, okay. Which is the page I pulled up on the screen. Okay. It's that first and, bullet point, right? 
it's the first bullet point yeah mm -hmm. so it it's basically what we're trying to say that it, is that it is it should be appropriate with um and it, it should be appropriate only because of the surrounding areas that are around us i do know that we are on currently um land that's used by the school or schooling bylaws but uh the initial purpose of the rationale is to adjust the uh, atypical bylaw to kind of shift it a little bit so that we are under uh not i guess we're not under the uh, schooling bylaw or okay. we can switch it over to a mixed use bylaw which would then um, make us conform with the people around us and it should be compatible with the adjacent um, properties and i guess the issue right now is mainly just getting it approved for because it's the land that we're currently on is on a former bylaw and as hong wang has said right like we are trying to um uh, change the current site and it's just being under um Uh, there's appeal there's an appeal um for that particular bylaw okay thanks carl Uh, if anyone else on the staff team have anything else to say, you don't have to use your mic, you can just type it out. But I just want to know if there's any other issues that may need to be brought up. So we can address that now.
Hi, guys. Hi, Professor. Hi. Um, Hello, Professor. I hope you have had a very interesting conversation so far. I think we're a little confused, or at least okay. I am a little confused. So tell me about it. I, I see you have sent me a question, but I sorry, I didn't uh, get a chance to read it before joining back to your group. Uh, OK, so I think, so we're this uh, staffing group. Uh -huh. um, I'm not really sure how this is supposed to work. Um, are we supposed to uh, provide recommendations based on the Etobicoke zoning code, or are we supposed to assume that this site is already a part of Toronto's official plan and just everything? So okay? offic official plan is different than zoning bylaw. So Etobicoke zoning code is a zone. It's a type of zoning bylaw. Official plan is, as I said, is sort of our Bible. It's uh, like it's 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 a local uh, policy uh, under the provincial plans. That the next thing is the official plan. So each and every application has to comply with the official plan. So all the policies of the official plan applies to all the sites. Etobicoke zoning bylaw is a zoning bylaw. It's a different, sorry, it's sort of zoning bylaw as we discussed in class is a, is one of the tools that you can implement the office of shop plan policies. So when a site has a site specific zoning bylaw or um, has a has an Etobicoke zoning bylaw or a comprehensive uh, city of Toronto zoning bylaw that applies to it, Depending on what type of application you have received, then you should um, look at it uh, based on those documents. So for example, in this case, is the applicant submitting a zoning bylaw application? What that, what that means is they are actually moving to change the bylaw, change the zoning bylaw. So when you are moving to change the zoning bylaw, to a site specific zoning bylaw. So if the site was zoned for something else, whether it was zoned for um, in, uh, institutional use or uh, the setbacks were different or the heights were different or you know, there were different things that applied to it, then you as an applicant want to build something different, you would submit a zoning bylaw application. When you submit a zoning bylaw application, then that means the previous zoning is not that it doesn't matter anymore, but it's re less relevant because you are actually moving to change it. You obviously can't move to change it to something that doesn't comply with the official plan unless you do an official plan amendment. And when you do any of these, the zoning bylaw amendment or is official plan amendment, uh, what the staff has to do is look look to see if it's appropriate to do this. Like for example, um, if you're moving for a zone uh, for an official plan amendment to build a um, I don't know a tower in a park, um, then that may be um, something that's not appropriate. So your official plan amendment is not accepted. But if there is a zoning bylaw amendment that is changing the height or the use of the site in a in a way that it's still acceptable by staff, then um, the previous zoning bylaw doesn't apply because you're changing it. Was it was it a little bit clear? So, professor, um, for the staff group, what recommendations are we supposed to make for them if if um, they get the zoning bylaw changed, then it falls into conformity with City of Toronto zoning bylaw, right? Uh, so that's the, that's the, either that's the aim or they want to have a site specific zoning bylaw. And, and that means they might not even follow the, this, um, the City of Toronto zoning by, um, the comprehensive zoning bylaw. Um, and that's still okay if they're moving to have that application. 
as staff, you have to review the application and see if those changes are appropriate. And the, the issues that are always identified in the staff report are the ones based on the type of application they submitted. So for example, it might be that they want to have two meters setback from one side and you want them to have more. So um, those are the type of issues you would have in your staff report. And then this is what the conversation, this is a conversation you should have now. So professor, for example, we were having conversations about the height of the building. On the staff room report, it says 11 meters, I think, and the applicants want 12 to 12 and a half. So uh -huh. do we talk about that issue? Yeah, or for example, uh, you would be, you would say uh, we think it's fine to be for it to be 12 or no we don't want you to go to 12 and here's the reason why so we a staffing group we could just hold a hard stance on 11 meters height and they would have to make changes to their building height yes but you have to have a good rationale behind as you said holding this stand because um we can't we can't say no because we said so. We have to have a planning rationale behind it. So we have to say either um, in this neighborhood everything is of this height, and we think the additional height would be overwhelming, uh, or you might want to say things like um, there there are some issues that. Um, may come up and, and there's a shadow impact that may come up because of uh, the additional height and we don't want you to have the additional the additional height etc cetera, etc cetera. could we uh, use the sorry carl sorry i one of uh, our points were basically that the from our understanding um from group one at least is that we are trying to amend the uh, city of Topical bylaw. If the staff were to say that um, they do not want us to have 12 or 12 and a half uh, meters in height, and we were to do 11 meters, if the bylaw does end up being amended to allow such height, mm -hmm. then we can just move forward, right? So uh, the bylaw that... would be would be amend amended by staff. So uh, it's not like someone else is going to amend it and then the staff can't do anything about it. Um, sorry, one second. Um, yeah, so, so then what happens is that you have submitted this draft by law of what you think it has to happen, right? So you have submitted this application with changes in the zoning bylaw and you're saying we want to amend the zoning bylaw to meet the changes we want. The staff will review it and say here are the things you can change, here are the things you cannot change and here's the reason why and then as applicant you either would decide that to change your application to meet the requirements that staff are putting forward or say you, you know what, we, are, we will agree to disagree. We think, we think that there are reasons why this makes sense and represents good planning. And based on um, the review we had, for example, in this similar situation, you had a building that was 12 story, 12, uh, 12 meters, and um, didn't have negative impacts, et cetera, et cetera. And um, that you have, um, you are you are fine with what you're proposing, right? Basically, uh, and and after that, you, if if that's the decision that you will not change your position, the staff will not change their position, then um, you you will have to agree to disagree, and the next step is to go to LPAT. So, professor, basically, the staffing group can make these decisions with good reasoning and then it's up to the applicants to conform or agree to disagree and go LPAT. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So you will have, uh, you will make the decision within the, that whether or not you can accept their uh, sort of solution to this problem uh, as, as staff. And then what happens is because you are the one writing the report to council, 
you are making the final recommendation. You're either recommending um, a, an approval or recommending a refusal, right? So then it's the, the applicant's turn to say, because you didn't recommend approval, we will go to LPAC. Is that clear? Okay, perfect. Sorry guys, I have to leave to meet one more group and then um, we don't have a lot more time so I wanna just get to them as well. Um, let me know if you have any question, you can email me as well and then we also can talk next time. Okay, thank you, Professor. Perfect, thank you, sorry about that. <laughs> so, Raymond, sorry, <laughs> as a representative of the staff, yes, seeing Proud as you staff. guys are the ones to approve and disapprove yes. of the amendment now, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that until she said it. Um, are so you approving? So, or? so basically, from the very get go, um, I guess we were talking about the right stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should consult with my uh, team members. <laughs> I don't really know. Nobody's saying anything. Oh. Um, um, I guess. I guess in our defense for group one and two, we've already defended the point that twelve not versus changing. eleven is not. Well, what happens quite if staff groups just says no? Eleven's a lucky number. I like it. Fair, fair, That's fair, fair, but. But I, you know, like we, need a, guys, we need a better we, argument than that, right? Yeah, I know. I understand. I'm just playing around. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, I think we do need to provide some type of, even if you guys don't agree with some of the stuff. I think as a, to make this project work, I think we need to have some type of uh, recommendations that are okay with everybody that we can all go about because we can't just continue to write the report when everything's just good and we just fine and dandy submit the same thing that was submitted to us right i think we need to have something we disagree on to write about <laughs> right like, i'm not trying to no be, no that's fair it's a fair I'm argument not trying to be hard um, about anything but from like an assignment point of view but um I don't quite see how. No, I love the design of the houses. I looked at the floor plans. It. It's amazing. No, just... I love it. Um, no, I like it too. But the yeah, the, but the idea Under, is underground that... garage, private too. It's very nice. <laughs> so, are you saying you're okay? Beer, like... I love it. If I had the money, I'd be living there right now, talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know how to go about it. So unless we can talk about some stuff we agree to disagree on, and then we can talk about it. Otherwise, I don't really know. I think currently at the standpoint, it. though, I think your current issue is only strictly the FSI and the height, right? Uh, FSI height and frontages and orientation. That's what lot frontages and orientation. That's what's highlighted in the staff report. Um, that's that wasn't addressed, and there's some other stuff that needs to be addressed but that wasn't my part my part was only municipal infrastructure and transportation impact and both those are okay i'm not sure about the other bulletin points my team needs to update me on that but um, yeah can we get anyone from the staff just to say what the issue with the orientation is like what like they the have so far yeah do you have were you able to find out your lot frontage and stuff yet carl uh no my team is maybe uh, we can start a big uh, uh, <laughs> maybe we can start a um whatsapp group for all of us at least um for some of the members so we can continue to talk about what things we want to disagree upon so we can write a report because otherwise i don't know how we're going to write this report um, I 
is our applicant report different from staff report? Yeah, I think so, but yeah. I think we have to talk about the same issues we disagreed upon or some issues you want to meet us in the middle or that type of stuff. Because if we don't have any issues that we disagree upon, I don't know how either of us, either teams are going to write anything. You can write like there's no issues. Like you can there's actually state issues. that. There's no issues. Yeah. Thank you. Great course. <laughs> See you next year. Make it make it simple, you know. A plus. Once, that would be great. Sorry, Raymond, do you have anybody on the staff team right now that was supposed to be in charge of the orientation and the law frontages that is currently in the chat? Um, I'm not sure not who's throwing names out, but, but can you let me know if they're here? I think everybody from my team is here. Let me just double check uh, who's supposed to be doing that part. Maybe a little motivation will get people moving. Yeah, because I haven't heard anybody from the staff team that is supposed to be in charge of the lot frontages and the orientation chime up with anything. Gosh. I mean, we can discuss more next meeting. Do we have a next meeting now? No, we don't. No. Oh. So for sure, man. Same applicant. Is if there's an issue you disagree with, that's going to be. Wait, are we Mark today? Like, is she going to mark us or no? Maybe participation. Uh. Uh, I think this is 1% uh, of the 30% that we need to do because it's part of the um, rubric she, she sent us today. And uh, today's chat would be, I, I I'm assuming it would fall under staff and applicant negotiations. Yeah, I think so too. And I agree with Raymond. I believe it's based on participation. Okay. Is anyone responding in the staff group? Uh, Raymond, I think, uh, sorry uh, to cut you off, Nan. Uh, Raymond, I think no. the lot frontages are 122 meters. 1.22? One I think it's. 122 are you asking per lot yeah okay then it's not 122. i don't even know what the uh requirements are for a topical zoning bylaw i have the floor space index uh, yeah, that I stated that earlier, I think, already. Mm. Uh, Raymond, were you able to find out if the staff members that were in charge of lot frontage is, is here? Do you have the list of your breakdown of who is in charge of what part? Do you know which section lot frontage is in? Because we broke it up by section. Oh. Um, I have the proposed lot frontages measurements, but like I don't know what page this is. This is from um, an applicant. Do you still want to hear what's the numbers? Yes, please. Yes. Could you okay. upload that or share that content by any chance? Uh, yeah, in one second. Let me just... Oh. Uh, Page three of planning or staff report. 
als Page Journal, als Page 30. Page 30? Thank you. Page 30 or 3? Because Din, Zane, and Benjamin. Hi, Ben. Hi. <laughs> it's page three of the planning rationale, is what they say? Uh, yeah, that's what they said. Oh, that's that that measurement you had there, one twenty-two point seven six meters, is not per unit. I think I think that's the dimensions of the site itself. You mean that again? Some some of the members says page three, some says page thirty-first. So give me a second. Sorry, my mic was off. Um, I'm just gonna pull it up right now. Uh, what Ben is trying to say? I think it's this one we're talking about, right? Yeah, but and say the yeah, individual frontages. Yeah, so I believe what they're saying is this, but this is the one that's along Daisy Avenue. We don't need that number in particular. We need each individual house, their lot frontages. It's terrible. I can't draw with a mouse. <laughs> Um, okay, maybe it's... Maybe it's on page 31, like your team said, then? And it's no, well, um, it's actually probably, it's probably in the drawings, civil one or oh, something. Actually, no, second, it is. Second, second bulletin one. point says unit widths okay. range between 4.2 and 4.9 meters. Yeah, I, I just read that as well, yeah. Are appropriate with respect to enclosed parking. What page was that, sorry? 31. 31 of the rationale. Yeah. Oh, okay. The rationale. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> Page 31. Yeah. That's the lot frontage. Yeah. So yeah. I think the minimum lot frontage required in the Etobicoke zoning bylaw for semi detached lots is 10.5 meters. 10.5 meters. Five meters. It's on the page five of the staff report. Mm -hmm. I see it. But it says single detached lots. Mm -hmm. Remember, Etobicoke doesn't even allow for townhomes. Fair, right. fair, fair. I just feel as though that yeah, guys, might not be able to What? Uh, it's built semi detached. <laughs> what do you mean there's no semi detached? Just build semi-detaches instead of townhomes. Yeah, so what Raymond's trying to say is if our amendment is not made with the bylaw, then we cannot have even townhomes town in this area. And therefore, the solution no may be... There's no, no way anything's going to go on. Yeah. Um, we may need to not make townhomes and just make semi-detached lots. <laughs> No, I think we'll allow townhomes. Right, group? Staff group? I, I, I think right. the reason why we want to have townhomes, though, is because of the uh, official plan mm -hmm. um, for in intensification. Yeah. I feel like if we make semi-detached lots, they would reduce the number of people we can jam into one area mm -hmm. significantly. And it, I think it would affect with... Um, traffic too if there's a lot of driveways for changing the design i think that would lower the traffic i think yeah i think like if we, i, I, I want to talk about since everybody's here most of us are here i think the idea isn't whether or not this development actually happened i think in a parallel universe as if we're applicants and staffs what would happen Right. That's what we're trying to aim for, right? 
Are you asking us a question? Or? Question for everyone. Like, is that, am I understanding it correctly? Like, we're supposed to be pretending that this is like a parallel universe and <laughs> we are actually the staff? Yeah. And the applicants? I think okay. That's the purpose. Okay. Of this. So, so we can disregard whether or not the things actually came up and how they came up. It's just how we talk about things, right? For what came up? Like how the, sorry, how the project, the development came up. Like if they actually what? got what they wanted. Yeah, like, yeah, we could ignore, because currently right now they're building the place. Yeah. They're building the townhomes. So obviously mm -hmm. the staff uh, for the city of Utopico had, I guess, passed it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we could ignore that. Okay. All right. Well, um, I don't know what my team wants. I'm not sure what they want to fight for. I'm not sure what they want to let go at all, actually. So aside from just being here, I can't really give any more reasonable input. Um, unless my team says something, which maybe they did. Let me just check. Uh, no, nobody said anything. So um, maybe I can get back to you guys in an email. If you can provide me your email, Nan, if you don't mind. Um, I already have Carl's contact info. Um, uh, you're going to make a group chat for all of us? At least the three of us. Um, three of us? Okay. Yeah. Um, I or or if anybody else in the team then would like um, to join. Yeah. Sorry? That would be, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, Carl, what did you say? If anybody on your team, Nen, would like to join the WhatsApp group, they can provide their phone number here as well. Then we can add yeah. them and we could discuss further. Do you, is your group has a WhatsApp group already? Uh, yeah, but I don't feel like my group, my whole group is going to join. Um, I can represent them and then I can be the mediator between our group and the staff and applicants. Oh. Uh, like how do I send you it without like private message? Go click um, on if the you group. You click the group chat Attendance. on the top right corner. Oh. Right corner. Okay. Uh, there should be an arrow to go backwards, and you should see two rooms. One is everyone, and one is group one. Mm -hmm. Above that, you should see find someone to chat with. You can type uh, either Raymond's name or, or my name, mm -hmm. and you should be able to find us. And you could just private message us your, I guess, your phone number. Um, it says in here, you can only start a private chat with moderators. Oh, I'm not on So can you send us your email then? Your email address? Uh, yeah, I can send it to you. Or you know what, I'll type it on and then you can send it to me or Carl or whatever. I'll send mine too. Well, how about we all send our email, just like, you know, like the representative one. All right, sounds good. I'll try to get back to you guys um, soon. Okay, it was good. All right, we're good Thanks, for today. Guys. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks, Carl. Thank Bye, guys. Bye. And then, thank you, Raymond. I like how fast everybody laughs. Oh my gosh.